five right plus in and six right continue to play. Coming up on the show today, we've got action from the Peter Lloyd stages at Pembury and from the Glynn Memorial stages on Anglesey, as well as a look at what else we've got coming up on special stage this year. First up, it's off to Wales for the Peter Lloyd stages at Pembury and a look at the class and junior battles going on throughout the day. It will be the ideal start for Nigel Jones and Tracy Davies. After two stages, they make a great start to lead the event with a 13-second advantage. For Bob Fowden and Ashley Trimble, it will be second place overall, and a place that sees them leading Class 7 at this stage. And chasing them down in that class were Phil Turner and Simon Anthony. Second place in Class 7 and fourth place on the leaderboard. And it will be 20 seconds further back to Sean Crowley and Emma Jones at this stage. Third in the class and fifth place overall. For Chris Simmons and Andy Moss, it will be a good start in class five, taking the lead in that class and ending this morning stages in third place overall. Second in that class would be a little way down on the overall leaderboard, Joshua and Tamsin Davey lying in 12th place overall and almost a minute back from the class leaders. And another few places back in 16th overall is Martin Harris and Andrew Rees. Third place in Class 5 at this stage, around 30 seconds back from Davey. Ian Kemfin and Phil Williams lead the way in Class 6. They had almost a minute to the leaders on the leaderboard, but their class lead was OK at this stage. Nine seconds, in fact. Back to this pair in second place. Nathan Jones, Tom Murphy just lying inside the top 10 overall with 10th. And third in the class were Tom and Jamie Barber, just outside the top 10 with 11th place and just two seconds behind Jones. In class four, it will be the lead for Leah and Sean Jones, first in the class as well as 13th on the leaderboard. They have a good lead in that class with nearest rivals Carl Box and Toby Adam lying second, but almost two minutes behind at this stage. And it will be a further minute back to Chris Lewis and Alan Hinton, third in the class lying in 41st on the leaderboard. In Class 8, it will be the lead for Wayne James and Stuart Harris, leading the way in the class from 15th on the leaderboard. It will be close though, with Neil Griffiths and Reese Lewis a few places behind in 18th overall, but the time's only four seconds apart. And for Andrew Davies and Jason Rees, it will be a further seven seconds, lying third in the class in 19th place overall. In Class 2, Lloyd Morgan and Sophie King open up the lead, a reasonable 10 seconds advantage as well after stage two in the class. And it will be William Maines and Yane Griffiths who were looking to take that class win from them this weekend. Second in the class, 22nd on the leaderboard. And third in that class were Keegan Rees and Rees Stoneman. They have just over a minute's gap to those in front at this stage. In class three, Steve Hopkins and Jack Davies take the lead after two stages. Meanwhile, Di Roberts and James Johnson Davies chase them down from second place in the class, themselves with a bit more of a gap behind them. A gap, in fact, of 39 seconds back to Paul and Kieran Monaghan, third in class three, lying in 36th on the overall leaderboard. Just a couple of crews in class one, and it will be the lead for Peter and Jack Bayliss. It will be close, though, with Joe Williams and Rob Gillam lying just five seconds back from the class leaders after stage two. So at the end of the day's first two stages, the overall results look like this. In the juniors, it will be the early lead for Charlie Barlow and Tom Hutchings, on track for the championship title and taking a two second lead at this stage. Their closest competition coming from Zach Hughes and Chris Evans. The pair once again swapping times with the rest of the crews at the top of the leaderboard. It will be third for Tom Delaney and Joe Cruttenden at this stage. A few seconds further back, but still only six seconds between them and Delaney. And for Matthew Davies and Ian Taylor, it will be a little further back with fourth place. 23 seconds back from the podium positions. 
Tommy Meadows and Ian Oakey round out the top five in the juniors, just another 10 seconds back from Davies ahead. With two stages complete, the junior results were looking like this. On to the afternoon and the final half of the day and a look at our class and overall winners. In class one, we'd see no change. Joe Williams and Rob Gillen continue to hold second place in the class and now with less than a minute to the leaders. But taking the class win were Peter and Jack Bayliss. Leading from start to finish, they take the class one victory by the end of the rally. No change in class two either. Keegan Rees and Rees Stoneman keep hold of the final step on the podium in that class to end the rally in 27th overall. William Maines and Yane Griffiths meanwhile end the day with second in the class with a couple of minutes lead over Rees behind. But it would be the class two victory for Lloyd Morgan and Sophie King, leading all day and taking the class victory by just over a minute. It's all change in class three as we lose Di Robertson, James Johnson, Davies when they roll the car after clipping a tire. Both crew members okay, but damage to the front corner of the suspension would prevent them from continuing. So that just left two finishers in class three, with Stuart Jacobs and Matthew Russ being second of those. Problems with the car cutting out during the day hadn't helped with the overall times. And it's the class three victory for Paul and Dave Goodman. They finish a couple of places higher overall as well in 33rd on the leaderboard. There wouldn't be any change in class four as Chris Lewis and Alan Hinton continue to round out the top of the class with third place. And for Carl Box and Toby Adam, it will be second in the class. The gaps through the top of the class four results were quite substantial by the end of the rally. But taking the win with the lead they'd held all day, Willier and Sean Jones, first in the class and finishing with seventh on the overall results. Nothing remaining the same in class five though, as we lose Chris Simmons from the results. Joshua and Tamsin Davey moving down to take third place in the class by the finish. It was a great run for Thomas Cooper and Paul Williams as they move up from fifth in the class this morning to take second by the finish. Also ending the rally with 14th overall. And for Martin Harris and Andrew Rees, it will be third in the class up to the class lead. Taking the victory at the end of the event in class five, just 14 seconds ahead of Cooper after a fantastic fight. Jonathan Davies and Kath Curzon round out the podium places in class six at the end of the rally. The pair also rounding out the top 10 overall by the finish too. For Tom and Jamie Barber, it will be second in the class, stepping up a place in the final stages after they replace Nathan Jones in that place. But no change in the leaders, Ian Kenvin and Phil Williams hold on to the class lead to the finish, taking victory by a whole minute. The class eight fight doesn't change through the afternoon stages. Andrew Davies and Jason Rees continue to round out the podium places in the class. For Neil Griffiths and Rees Lewis, it will be second in the class, just 11 seconds ahead of Davies by the finish. And that of course, means that it's victory in class eight for Wayne James and Stuart Harris, almost a minute's advantage by the end of the day. Sadly, the class seven and indeed overall battle would change on the final stage when we lose event long leaders, Nigel Jones and Tracy Davies through mechanical failure. So at the end of the rally, it will be Wynne Watkins and Sharon Roberts who take third place in class seven, as well as finishing in fifth place on our overall leaderboard. It will be second place in the class for Phil Turner and Simon Anthony, around a minute's advantage over Watkins, but their fight for the class lead was a lot closer. Ian Godney and Natalie Borum reaching the end of the rally just two seconds ahead of Turner to take the class victory and second overall on the rally. But with Nigel Jones missing from the results, it will be Bob Fowden and Ashley Trimble reaching the finish with victory. 38 seconds the overall advantage at the end of the day. So before we look at the juniors, here's a reminder of the overall results.
on to the juniors then to round out the day. And sadly for Zach Hughes and Chris Evans, it will be a drop down the results in the afternoon stages. Tom Williams and Emma Morrison have a good run to move up the results and into fourth. But that almost came to an end in the final few miles with this two-wheel moment. Luckily held well and back down on its wheels to continue to fourth overall. And they wouldn't be the only ones having a moment like that. Flynn Lewis and Unum Pyler would also manage to save a two-wheel moment from disaster. These tyres at Pembury easy to get caught out on, clearly. Tommy Meadows and Ian Oki find a little more pace and finish the day with third place overall. A minute and a half back from second. And in that second place were Tom Delaney and Joe Crittenden, gaining that position earlier in the day with the drop down for Zach Hughes. But taking victory this weekend were Charlie Barlow and Tom Hutchings, a great result that gets them the championship victory for 2050. So with the rally complete, here's a reminder of the final results. The Glynn Memorial Rally runs over two days and is once again joined by the Junior Championship and a chance for them to experience the dying art of rallying in the dark. On to the first couple of stages and the senior event and it will be the lead for Chris Ford and Neil Coleman after stage four. The pair with a 21 second advantage at this stage. For Will Owen and Rob Hopewell it will be second. Not too far off the lead, the time is very close and plenty more miles to go. Robert Hughes and Kevin Butler end this stage with third. They lead the way in Class C and lie 16 seconds back from Hopewell ahead. Scott Moran and Chris Ridge, meanwhile, would be having a great start to the rally with fourth place. They lie in that position just 12 seconds back from Hughes. For Howard Potter and Martin Haggard, it will be fifth place. The Sunbeam pair leading the way in Class B and on an equal time to Moran. Tom and Jamie Barber guide the BMW round to sixth place at this stage. Three seconds back from the close battle ahead of them. And for Ian Kenvin and Phil Williams, it would just be a single second separating them from the places above as they lie seventh. For Andrew Barker and Stephen Mort, it would be eighth. The Citroen pair lying second in Class C at this stage. And John and Tara Lee Hardman lead the way in Class A at this stage of the rally. Ninth place overall and clearly pushing the micro well. And rounding out the top ten were Mike English and Andy Robinson. Tenth place overall and just three seconds behind Hardman ahead. In the juniors it would be the early lead for Josh and Tommy McEarlin. They have a good lead of seven seconds in this close fought championship. After dropping down the order at the Peter Lloyd stages, Zach Hughes and Chris Evans would be looking to keep hold of this second place this time. For now, things were going to plan. Tom Delaney and Joe Crittenden, meanwhile, had their best result last time out. And this weekend started well too, with third place at this stage. And for Will Butler and Tom Wood, it would be fourth place, 15 seconds back from the podium positions. For Finley Retson and Andrew Faulkner, it would be fifth place. 11 seconds back from Butler and of course with many more stage miles to go. So with four stages complete here at the Glen Memorial Rally, the results look like this so far. On to the next few stages and heading into the night and there will be no change for Chris Ford and Neil Coleman as they continue to lead the way. The advantage now almost a minute. It would still be second for Will Owen and Rob Hopewell. The leaders slipping away from them, but at least they were keeping everyone else at bay. And the same could be said for Robert Hughes and Kevin Butler. Third place at this stage and still looking at chasing down those ahead of them on the results. Scott Moran and Chris Ridge keep the good pace to the end of the day with fourth place. 
28 seconds the difference between them and those podium positions. There's no change for Howard Potter and Martin Haggart. Fifth place was theirs and they remain within four seconds of Moran at this stage of the rally. And there's no change to sixth either for Tom and Jamie Barber as they remain in that position just a further four seconds back from Potter. Unfortunately, Ian Kenvin and Phil Williams dropped down the results and out of the top 10 into 13th during this loop. This frees up that position for Brandon Smith and Terry Martin. The Darian pair now just two seconds behind Barber up ahead. John and Tara Lee Hardman continue to drive the micro well, ending day one with eighth place overall and leading the class still at this stage. And that was indeed a position they took from Andrew Barker and Stephen Mort who now lie in ninth place, but on an identical time to Hardman overall. And there's no change to the crew rounding out the top 10 as Mike English and Andy Robinson remain in that position, just two seconds back from the fight ahead. In the juniors, there wouldn't be much change in the results, with Josh and Tommy McEarlin still leading the way overall. No advance for Zach Hughes and Chris Evans as they remain in second. The gap now up to 10 seconds though. And for Tom Delaney and Joe Crittenden, it would still be that final step on the podium, just three seconds behind Hughes at the end of day one. Will Butler and Tom Wood are unable to gain any time on the podium positions, but they don't lose any either, ending the day with fourth place. And for Finley Retson and Andrew Faulkner, it would be fifth, although now on identical times overall to Butler up ahead. So at the end of day one, the results look like this. On to day two, and just as it was on day one, the lead would still belong to Chris Ford and Neil Coleman. The advantage was growing slightly, but still at just over a minute. And it would still be Will Owen and Rob Hopewell that are trying to keep them in their sights and keep them honest. The win may look out of reach on stage times, but they were placed well to take advantage of any problems. And it would be much the same in third, with Robert Hughes and Kevin Butler in that position, themselves around a minute back from Owen ahead. No change, meanwhile, for Scott Moran and Chris Ridge as they remain in fourth place. The difference between themselves and the podium was now 16 seconds. Tom and Jamie Barber have some good stage times this morning, moving their way up to fourth place overall. This move would be at the expense of Howard Potter and Martin Haggart, who drop a place in this loop to take sixth, 13 seconds back from Barber now. Brandon Smith and Terry Martin continue to hold on to seventh place in the Darien. Three seconds back from Potter. And it will be a time they shared with Andrew Barker and Stephen Mort. Eighth place overall and needing to push to change that in the final half of the rally. So that would of course be a move back down to ninth for John and Tara Lee Hardman. Unable to keep eighth, but the times were still close with only two seconds between them and the position ahead. And Mike English and Andy Robinson continue to round out the top 10. They close the gap from two seconds to just one second now. So with just the final part of the rally remaining, the results are looking like this. On to the final stages then, and no change in the juniors. Their results at the top staying as they were all day, with Finley Retson and Andrew Faulkner coming out in fifth place. Will Butler and Tom Wood managed to end the event with fourth place. So close to a podium, just a second between them and third position by the finish of the rally. So that means that Tom Delaney and Joe Crutenden just about managed to hold on to that third place. Luckily for them, there were no more stage miles for Butler to continue that push. 
Zach Hughes and Chris Evans have a much better event this weekend to end the rally with second place overall. But taking victory this weekend were Josh and Tommy McGurlin, a win of 12 seconds at the end of the rally after a close weekend of competition. We're back to the seniors now, and it will be 32nd on the leaderboard for Gethin Sharp and Heather Merrison. A result that sees them taking first in Class F. Jason Hodge and Daniel Reed have a good run to end the day with the win in Class E in the Corolla, as well as 22nd overall. No change, though, to the result for John and Tara Lee Hardman. It's still ninth place overall for the pair, which is enough to keep hold of the lead in Class A and take the victory. Howard Potter and Martin Haggett also continued their run of good times to end the event with the victory in Class B with their seventh overall finish. A good result for Tom and Jamie Barber as they finish with fifth place overall, taking third in Class D. And it's the Class C victory for Robert Hughes and Kevin Butler as they end the rally with fourth place overall, 33 seconds outside those podium positions. Talking of which, the last of those podium positions will be a great finish for Scott Moran and Chris Ridge. They take second in the class and third place overall. No change on the results for Will Owen and Rob Hopewell. Nothing they could do to claim the lead. They end the rally just over a minute and a half back from that first position. So that means that it's victory for Chris Ford and Neil Coleman. The lead they'd held all weekend, turning into a great victory for the pair here at Anglesey. So we reached the end of the rally. Here's a quick reminder of the final results. Five bike plus in and six right continued over there.